What constitutes a tactical RPG rather than just strategy or RPG? Well, it's a fine line, but overhead gameplay, mostly turn-based, character leveling stats, and heavy narrative is what we look for. As almost perfect Into the Breach is as a strategy game, and as awesome as Wargroove is, they would not constitute as an RPG in our sense of the word. Of course, if we happen to miss anything, or unfairly omit a game, please let us know in the comments. Where do you draw the line in this genre mashup? Let's take a look at the best tactical RPGs available on the Switch. Banner of the Maid is one of my favourite games of the year so far, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it in one of our end of year lists. This is a fantastic tactical RPG made by Chinese developers who are so clearly inspired by a double helping of Final Fantasy Tactics and Fire Emblem with gameplay similar to Fire Emblem but having the feeling of Final Fantasy Tactics with its story, visuals and overall style. If you like both those games then you'll get a big kick out of this one and I cannot recommend it enough. Set during an alternative French Revolution, this really ticked all the boxes for me. A fantastic strategy RPG, I've been pleading with the publishers to get a physical version done but so far it is only a digital release, no physical version in the works for now. Fire Emblem Three Houses is the premier strategy RPG on the Switch, well probably for most people. While the series has long since veered from its original roots, much to old school fans' ire, there's no question the evolution of the series since Awakening has taken this Nintendo series to the next level. The biggest the series has ever been, offering three factions to play through this epic adventure, each of which offering something slightly different, not major, but the amount of people who have played this three times over is bewildering. 100 plus hours easy and people still come back for more. Now the series is back on home consoles, you're getting a far more epic feel with soldiers on the battlefield giving a sense of grandeur, like a proper war. Great characters, incredibly addictive gameplay loop of battles and then downtime in the castle to build relationships, this should be one of the top priority games for your Switch. But the most important question of all, which house did you choose? For me, you can keep your Fire Emblems because I'm sitting here with three strategy RPGs that just excite me to the core. At the time of writing, there are currently three Super Robot Wars games on the Nintendo Switch, T, V and X in the order they came to the system. All three are excellent experiences. I wouldn't say they are excellent strategy games since they are actually pretty easy and require little in terms of actual, well, strategy. But these games just ooze class and style and they are home to the best attack animations bar none. If you want to feel like you're in an interactive mech anime, these are the games you want. Every attack is just beautifully animated and I am pleading with Nintendo to let these dudes handle the attack animations for the next Fire Emblem game. It is worth it just to play the games for these animations alone, that's how good they are. Sadly, none of them ever released physically outside of Asian regions or digitally for that matter, but you can grab V and X digitally from the Japanese eShop with English. Links are below for some eShop credit. T can be gotten there, but you don't want it from the Japanese eShop as it does not have English. Instead, you can get it from the Hong Kong eShop where it does have English. And the same with the physical versions. You can import these physically. Any will do for X and V as they all have English, but T, you need to avoid the Japanese one and go for the Hong Kong or Singapore version. It is the most hassle to get, but it is the best of the bunch, at least in my opinion. Links for all of these are below to point you in the right direction, and you can also support us at the same time. They are affiliate links, so it massively helps us out to support the show. Plus, in return, you can get a fabulous 5% off all physical items with the coupon code SWITCHWATCHTV while checking out. That's all one word, Switch Watch TV, and if you want to order this, you can get 5% off your order. Nice. Alright, if you think Super Robot Wars crossed the line at being too easy, may I kindly send you in the direction of SD Gundam G Generation Cross Rays. It's a bit of a mouthful, but this is basically the same thing as Super Robot Wars, but instead of a crossover of many anime properties, this is solely focused on the Gundam universe. Reams of different storylines taken from the universe, there's lots of content for fans of Gundam to enjoy, and it will actually be a decent test of your strategy skills. It may like the pizzazz of Super Robot Wars with the 3D model, here but it is still great and an essential import if you want to pick these up physically the Japanese or Asian version. This is not available in the West at all so you can download it from the Japanese eShop or import a physical version with the links below in the description. 
there are a wealth of Disgaea games currently on the Switch, with one and four having remastered editions and five which was a brand new title to the system. And that's not all, six is on the way too, slated for next year. I mean, together, I don't think how many hours you're looking at with each of these games. Absolutely full to the brim with content, over-the-top attack animations, hilarious humor, and dialogue and fantastic gameplay. You need at least one of these games in your collection. All of them may be a little bit overload, but you can't say you don't get your money's worth with these fine, highly polished tactical experiences. Fail Seal Arbiter's Mark is a very highly rated tactical RPG, with many fans claiming it to be one of the best on the system. If you can get past the slightly unappealing character art style, you've got yourself a fantastic time with plenty of content and depth. There's a heavy focus on story for this one, so strap yourself in and enjoy what this indie game has to offer. So far, this has not got a physical release, which is a shame. Hopefully, one day in the future. Mercenary Saga Chronicles is a 3-in-1 pack of miniature tactical RPGs that are heavily influenced by Final Fantasy Tactics. You can instantly tell from the visuals alone. While it doesn't come close to its inspiration's perfection, these bite-sized adventures will tide you over if played in short bursts. There's also a fourth game in the series available by itself, The False Phoenix. Langrissa was probably one of, if not the biggest rival to Fire Emblem way back in the day. Well, okay, maybe that was Shining Force. But anyways, here we have a package of remasters of the first two games in the Langrissa series, 1 and 2. In this package, you can play the versions closer to the original, with less detailed sprites and original classic artwork of the characters, or totally revamped in a remake style. These are pretty heavy-duty releases, with each battle consisting of dozens of soldiers for each army. You'll find a lot to enjoy here, even even if it is a bit simple by today's standards. Brigandine The Legend of Runesia is the sequel to a cult classic strategy RPG that was on the PlayStation 1. This looks to be equally underappreciated on the Nintendo Switch, with it coming and going without too much of a fanfare. But it's still a very good time, especially if you're into slow burners. It's a game that does not hold your hand and takes a while to warm up, but once you're in, you're in. Gorgeous artwork with plenty of content, with many factions to see the story through with. In the US, this was released physically by Limited Run, but if you missed that, then you can pick up the physical version of the Asian or Japanese release, both of which contain English. Links are below for that. Children of Zodiac is one of the more obscure titles in the list. Perhaps it can be considered a hidden gem. With an indie budget, it's not quite as refined as some of the other games on this list, but this story-driven effort includes unique combat with dice and cards. Now, my eyes start twitching at the thought of cards in games. Uh, it's not something I enjoy, but this looks like it's worth a shot. It's available digitally, and Europe has a physical version released by Red Art Games on their website, which, if you're watching this before January 2021, we have a 10% discount code for, for our followers, SWATCH10 on their website when checking out for 10% off anything. Or Play Asia, they have a few copies too, which I'll also pop in a link below. And you can use our 5% code off that. The Banner Saga Trilogy are three tactical RPGs with a phenomenal presentation. While they are separate games, your story from one game to the next carries over, coming together as one long journey. Great writing, great choices in the choose-your-own-adventure vibe. These definitely need to be experienced, even if the gameplay isn't you know, particularly special. In total, the trilogy is only around 30 hours long, which isn't even as long as some of the single games in this list. So there's no fat to be found. It needs to be enjoyed as one big story. Chroma Squad is a surprisingly good tactical RPG, a game heavily inspired by the Super Sentai and Power Rangers kind of thing. Who'd have thought that those mid-90s schlocky TV shows could produce a very professionally put together strategy game? Squad up with different skill trees and equipments, branching storylines, and even includes some mech combat action for good measure. This was released physically by Super Rare Games in Europe. On the Switch, there are two great strategy RPGs from Sega in the Valkyria Chronicles series 1 and 4. These games truly do blur the lines of the genre here. Is it strategy? Sure. RPG? Yep. But also a little bit of first-person shooter, third-person shooting as well with real-time, turn-based elements. What's going on here? It's confusing, but this series really is a wonder. Both games are set in a world loosely based or inspired by the events of World War II. They take the seriousness of war but add in an anime flavor to it and they are just fantastic. The fourth game can and should be bought physically by you guys just because it's so good. The first game is sadly digital only, but can often be found on sale for a stupidly cheap price. For me, these are essential. 
Wintermore Tactics Club is an overlooked tactical RPG set in the real world of a school club who get their D&D imaginations on and battle other clubs. There's a strong visual novel flair to the story with this one, with them being more interactive than usual, and the combat, although small and simple, is perfectly compact with an almost puzzle-like style, as can be found in other games with small arenas. Nice art style, really like the imaginary costumes they put over their real clothes. Simple and charming and worth the look. God Wars is a very solid strategy title if you've exhausted other options on this list, packed to the brim with content, standard turn-based strategy and lore-ridden narrative. I don't think many claim it will be a top-tier release, but it's one that will scratch that itch if you're into Japanese mythology as well. Okay, we've been pretty uncontroversial up to this point, but let's end with something to, you know, stir the discussion. Surely XCOM is a tactical RPG, right? I mean, sure, most people would never look at it as an RPG, but strip away the visuals and perhaps everything you know about the game, mechanically, it stands alongside strategy RPGs. Not perfectly, but it deserves to be here. While not the best port ever done, XCOM 2 Collection provides almost endless content for you as you defend against alien invaders. It's a classic and there's nothing quite like getting one of your squad members to survive the whole game. You kind of create your own stories with this one. And there we have it. Do you agree with our list? Which of these games do you have and what would you add to this selection? Leave a comment and let us know. Many thanks to our executive producers, God of Resin, Santa Tartaruga, Jonathan Rumo, Ganicus, Brent McLean and Dane Wilkinson, plus all of our other YouTube members who help support the show. And you, yes you, you watching right now. If you watched all the way here, you're a legend. The longer you watch, the more it helps us out. On the screen right now are a bunch of other content that we have produced that we highly advise you give a little watch to. We'll see you guys over there. Take care.